crazy. It really is. Somehow Spurs have ended up sacking Mourinho and it's not the biggest story in football because there's something even bigger, something even worse to some people, something even better to very few, something which I'm kind of in the middle of, something which my mind has changed on quite a lot over the last week. And that is the European Super League. It's apparently going ahead, it's apparently happening and 12 teams have signed on the dotted line seemingly. This is a big a big kahuna, and one we just can't ignore anymore. Hey, no range with the comic here, Ryan, and we're just going to be talking about the ESL. Sounds like some American sporting league, so I don't love that. I'll start off with where everyone else is, essentially, with this situation, and that is that this idea of the European Super League is a terrible one. I think it damages the general European football landscape. I don't think it helps, but, and this is a big but, while I don't like that, I also don't like the idea of UEFA and FIFA having the ability to tell anyone what they can and can't do. They're not a government. They're not a world government. They're a governing body. They're a bureaucratic, bloated organization who somehow, somehow have got away with corruption for decades. And now, and now they have the audacity to say to particular clubs who they don't own, they don't own them, what they can and can't do. And I'm not for that. I don't like authoritarianism. I don't like someone being able to tell someone else what to do unless it's your job and it's your boss telling you what to do. Other than that, I'm not for this in any other aspect of life. And UEFA, trust me, are not the boss of Manchester United. They're not the boss of Barcelona. They're not the boss of Real Madrid. They're not. While the Super League is a bad idea, UEFA is equally bad, if not worse, comparatively. They are essentially stopping someone from creating a new competition. Now, we can say that the European Super League is anti-competitive, that it might be considered that. But what UEFA is doing and what FIFA are trying to do is straight up, they're becoming a monopoly. To be fair, they actually already are the monopoly and these clubs are trying to change that because they're saying, you have all the cards here and we're trying to play in your system. We're the draws, these 12, 15 clubs, we're the biggest clubs in the world and somehow you get some of the pie. Why do you get the pie? What do you do? What do you really do other than pay people illegally, funnel off funds to external places, generally just be a shady organization that's like a mini UN, but even worse. What? I don't know how UEFA's been able to do it, but the amount of positive press they've got from this is insane. It really is. They are such a shit organization and have never, never, ever done the right thing by the clubs, by the people involved and by the fans. At least I know the clubs actually have a vested interest in the fans. People are saying this is awful for the fans. They don't care about the fans. No, these clubs care about their own fans. They don't care about the other club's fans. There are all of these professional pundits, people with these great opinions, and they're all on the same side. If everyone you're talking to has the same opinion and there's no counter argument from the other side, what do you think's gonna happen? You're living in a bubble and people are not gonna understand what the other people are saying. And the reason why these clubs are doing it is pretty clear. It's about the dollar dollar bills, it's about the euros, the pounds, it's about the money. They want the money, they want more money. They're saying we bring the money to the Premier League, we bring the money to UEFA, we bring the money to the Champions League, so why shouldn't we get more money? I understand that. And one board member from one of these clubs who were involved in this said, the primary function of a club, the primary function is to become profitable and become efficient. The secondary thing, and it's a big thing, but it's secondary, is to have the cultural and fan impact that clubs do have in the footballing world and outside of that. Secondary. He's right. I don't know why that's a contentious point. The point of this is, if the club is not run successfully, if it is not run profitably, then there's no fan culture, there's no clubs, there's nothing, because the thing is going to go into administration and liquidation. It's not going to be in existence anymore. So to say that there's a problem with what you said there is beyond me. This comes from a hardcore football nut, all right? I am, seriously, I'm on both sides of this. I don't know where I 100% stand. But the fact I don't know where I 100% stand stands to show how corrupt and bad UEFA is and how potentially money-hungry these clubs are. But, again, the clubs are being outdone by the corporation in FIFA. That's what's happening. And other people will say those clubs are outdoing the clubs smaller than them in the Premier League, in La Liga, and I get that. But the big dog is UEFA and FIFA. And the things they have threatened to these players and clubs is a bit ridiculous, specifically to the players. The clubs are one thing. They're making their own bed and they will accept the terms if they're what come to be. 
but the players should not have to face the type of ramifications that are being said they would have to face if this happens. The question is, why are these clubs looking at saying we need to have more money right now, the biggest clubs in the world? They have all the money, they're making all the money, they're making all the, the revenue, they're making all the revenue, not profit, they're making all the revenue. Why do they need more? Why do they need more? The answer to that is pretty simple. The pandemic hit everyone, and I'm sure it hit these clubs really, really badly. You take a look at these clubs' balance sheets, I'm sure they've fudged the numbers to make them look okay. They must be kicking it. They must be falling down a pan that is very, very deep. A deep dish pizza type pan. That's what's happening with their financials and fundamentals right now because of this whole coronavirus situation. Because of that, they've said, wait, hang on. Maybe we need to do this to be sustainable because something is not right here and we will go under if something doesn't change. Think about this. It's been a whole year since fans have been allowed in the stadium, since travel has been allowed, since everything's been going on. That doesn't help these clubs. They've still been functioning, but I am sure they've been functioning at a pretty big loss for the last year. I'll also add, it is seemingly getting way, way harder for clubs to qualify for the Champions League. In the Premier League, there are, what, five points between second or, sorry, third and eighth, I think? Something like that. That's, that's not a lot. And these clubs are being pushed out. So I understand why they're doing it for their financial benefit. In La Liga, it's the same. When you look at the top of La Liga, the top four clubs, there's six points between the top four clubs. There is a problem here where these clubs are seeing their potential grasp on the domestic competitions they're in slip away a little bit. You see Serie A, it's the same deal. La Liga is the same as I said, League A. It's very, very fiddly for some of these teams saying, if we don't get Champions League football for two or three years, we can't run the way we're running. So I get it. The hypocrisy is not lost on me is that the Premier League are saying, you can't do this. You can't form a breakaway league. It's so bad. I'm sitting there looking at it saying, hang on a second. You did this. You did this in the early 90s to the first division, the Football League. It was you who created the Premier League by cherry picking clubs and saying, you get to be in this exclusive elite system. That's what happened in the early 90s. That's how the football system changed. And Sky, Sky was also imperative to that situation. And they're now going on about how it's so wrong, it's so wrong. You were loving it when you were making all the money, but now that there's all these other platforms, all these other streaming services, all these other distributors, you're like, this is terrible, we can't have this because BT Sports doing a job. They're not doing a bad job, are they? The zone. I think they're smelling the coffee and they're smelling, ooh, this is too, this is too all over the place. We can't have these clubs having this much power. They should have the power over themselves. And because of that, I'm going to say the ESL, while I don't like it, while I really don't like it, if it doesn't impact the domestic league, I'm for it. The big gripe I do have with it, obviously, is that there's no promotion relegation in the same way because 12 or 15 of the clubs are going to be there forever. I think the way you get around that is you say the first inaugural season is these clubs plus X amount of other clubs. And then there will be promotion and relegation saying you have to do well in your own league or you have to do well in the competition itself to stay in the system. Because I think this idea of founding clubs staying forever, I don't think it really works. It takes away part of the spark. You need relegation and promotion for there to be a real system in place where people can really work and strive to be better. So if they can add that somehow, then I'll basically be like, yeah, fine, do it but I don't think they're gonna do that either. This give and take seems to be very, very weird and I'm not sure who's gonna win out here. UEFA or these clubs because these clubs seem to be pretty hard nosed about this one and UEFA seem to be pretty hard nosed about the way they're reacting to it. So it's all over the place. It really is. Jose's being fired and uh, Spurs are in a shit show. The truth is the Premier League is the best league in the world, bar none. It's definitely the best. Nothing else stands a candle to it. Nothing else is there. But the reason the Premier League is the best and the reason why there are six English teams in this Super Cup shenanigans is because everyone likes those clubs. When you look across the world, no one cares about Brighton. I like Brighton. I like Burnley. I love Burnley. Sean Dyche, you're a lad. But no one cares about Brighton all around the world. They just don't. They really don't. They care about Manchester United. They care about Manchester United when they play Brighton. I think that we're in a position where... We need to be very careful as to how this really pans out because it could be cataclysmic. If this goes the way they're saying how the clubs involved in the European Super League could be banned from their domestic competitions, will be banned from the Champions League, which just makes sense considering what they're trying to do. Those two kind of make sense. 
I don't like the domestic league thing. And if this thing comes at the expense of the domestic league, then I don't want that to be the case because the football pyramid is more important than this. But the thing which gets me is UEFA and FIFA threatening the players who play for these teams that they will not be able to play in internationals and continental cups for their nations. I think there is serious problems here. The fact they've said it and the fact they might go ahead with it, I'm pretty sure that's leaning on the illegal side of stuff. I don't know. That seems exclusionary to me. And I would say there'll be some big time lawyers involved in this one. I said there that the football pyramid is very crucial to the English game. Grassroots football is how we have players like Jamie Vardy, how we have people coming up the ranks and doing what they do and create history like Leicester City did. But the Premier League is going to be giving 25% of all television revenues to the lower sides in the leagues for the foreseeable future. In my opinion, if it's not sustainable on its own, it shouldn't be there. I know it's hard, I know it's not going to be easy, but I think the three-tier system is probably how it's going to be. League 2 is probably going to be defunct and go into non-league or into non-professional status because it just doesn't work. I'm just going to read this one here because I believe it was Mark Chapman who said this, and he said, the owners care more about streaming services in China than real fans. My question is, what does that mean? Are fans streaming in China or across other parts of the world not real fans? Do they not qualify? Are they not equal? Are they not viewed as equal? Uh, I wrote that's a bit dehumanizing. I feel it is, especially with all the anti-Asian hate that's going on right now across the world, especially Western world, because everyone's apparently attacking Asians for one reason or another. I think it was a poor choice of words and it can be easily taken out of context. Now, I do not think what you said was even tinging on racist, but just be careful with what you say because people can really frame things differently. My point is those fans are just as equal fans as the fans all across the world, in Liverpool, in Tottenham, at Arsenal, they're the same. They believe that they want their team to do better. They believe that they want their team to win. What's the difference? I'll be fair. You can have your opinion on the CCP, all right? You can. But the Chinese people are a different case. Chinese people are great. En masse. Obviously, not every single person is a good person. But Chinese people, I've been China multiple times. Cool place. Good people. Fun people. Loving people. CCP, maybe? We don't know. I have my opinions, you have your opinions, everyone has opinions, but let's not just blame the people there or the streaming services themselves just because they're willing to pay the money. They're willing to pay the money so people in China can watch it. What's the problem with that? What, what is actually the issue there? And of course, the other 14 Premier League clubs are going to be like, yeah, yeah, we want to ban the other six clubs. Just get them gone. Because that way Leicester wins the league. That way Everton comes third, buddy West Ham comes second. And the relegated clubs who are going to get relegated also get a bye for this season. I don't know what they're going to do with the domestic league. I really don't. As I said, if this comes at the cost, this ESL, whatever it is, comes at the cost of the domestic league being ruined, then I'm not for it at all. But if it's just at the cost of the Champions League, then UEFA and FIFA need to fuck off because I'm done with it. I'm done with them telling people what they can and can't do while sitting in their chairs telling other people what they have to do with their money. No, I'm not for it. I've changed my mind on this stuff. I swear, it's kind of like a bit of a Brexit debate. I was remain, I'm like, I want to remain in the EU. Like lots of opportunities, growth, business, everything's there. 2017, 2018 comes by, I'm like, nah, I changed my mind. I changed my mind, Brexit, very, very good idea because I saw how much fluff there was involved in the EU and I saw how much they didn't care about the benefits and the livelihoods of people in the UK. And I said, you know what? I don't want this external place setting us rules where they can have their say on our governance, on our legal system, on our food standards, on all these things. It is bureaucratic nonsense. I don't want it anymore. And because of that, I changed my mind here. I'm in the middle now. Before I was super against this European Super League, but now FIFA had done this, what do you want me to say? You can say I'm combative sometimes, all right? When things I care about mess up, I'm combative. So maybe I'm saying I'm gonna weigh up both options and say, I don't know. I'm telling you, this can all be avoided. Just create a 40 team Champions League. I made a video about it. I said, this is how you do it. You get more elite teams in there. You get some more teams from lower divisions. You get some more teams from lower coefficient countries and everyone will be happy. I know 40 teams in Europe is a lot, but I think the Europa Conference League and the idea of that has sullied the idea of the Champions League for these clubs because these clubs in the Champions League are saying, wait, so now there's the Champions League, there's the Europa League, which is getting way more viewership than it ever did 10, 15 years ago because it's actually turned into a very, very fun, engaging competition. And now there's Europa Conference League where the fans of those clubs from those tiny countries are gonna be paying attention to that match as opposed to the Champions League match. Champions League viewership is going to go down 
when the Europa Conference League happens. I know it, it might not be a lot, but these clubs do not want it. For some reason, UEFA don't see it. I don't know why they don't see it. I don't know how they can't see this conference idea being terrible. It's just sullying and diluting the brand. And it's awful. It really is. But then that's just UEFA and FIFA. Big clubs are big clubs, all right? But UEFA and FIFA are the biggest of the big. They're the big dogs. They're the ones in charge. And if you're going to push your power about like that and not allow these clubs to have their say, then, I mean, I'm kind of in one way supporting the clubs. I don't want to be because I think what they're doing is questionable and wrong in some ways. But I think what FIFA is doing, in my opinion, in terms of the span of this, I think FIFA and UEFA are doing something a lot worse, which is creating pure monopoly competition. There's nothing else to it. it. really is that they're creating a system where they're blocking players from being able to play for their national teams, which is abhorrent. It's wrong. It's sick. I think some people dream of playing in a European Championships or a World Cup, and that's just not going to happen if you do this. So <laughs> after all of that, I, uh, I still don't know. I'm still not sure where I sit on this, but I would say if it was a scale of 1 to 10, I'm 5.2 in favour of the clubs and 4.8 in favour of FIFA and UEFA. And really, in all likelihood, it should be way more in favour of FIFA and UEFA, but they're just sacks of shit themselves, and I can't, I can't support someone doing something like that. At least have your own vested interests at heart. At least be that. At least I understand that. FIFA and UEFA are nonsense. They've always been nonsense. I do not like the operation. I do not like the organization. But I like Tottenham. I like the Premier League. And I hope that this can find some type of resolution because I don't want that changed. But uh, everything's in flux at this moment in time. And we will find out what will happen in the near, probably very far future because this is going to take a lot of litigation. This is going to take a lot of lawyering to get fixed and sorted out. So... UEFA, you shit. The big clubs, maybe slightly less shit. Still shit, less shit. Anyway, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please do like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel down there. If you didn't, if you didn't, who's gonna come after you? UEFA. Trust me, if I end up like done in a couple days' time, in a week's time, you know who it was. You know who it was. You know who it was. <laughs> You don't want UEFA coming after you. You really don't. So just subscribe anyway to avoid that. I've been Narendra the Comic. You have been Graham. We'll see you next time. That's tomorrow. If you don't know, make a video every single day. You've been doing it every day for over 1,000 days now. We ain't stopping till we get to 10,000 subscribers. So do subscribe. Pop back again tomorrow for some more quality shitty content. Because we're hashtag never not here. Just how it goes. Also bring the Bukwas. Bukwas means nonsense in Punjabi. And we also bring that. We bring a lot. Bring a little. Do a lot. Do a little. But we do indeed bring the quality shit content on a daily basis so see you tomorrow more of the same but slightly different but essentially the very same once more see you then skadoosh